How's it going everybody? And thank you for joining me on Out of the Bothros. Uh, so today we're going to go ahead and do a little reading and a little talk about uh, forgiveness and what it really means from the words of Jesus to forgive somebody and to be forgiven as well as kind of, you know, um, there's a little bit of a misunderstanding, I believe, taught with the rest of the world about what forgiveness is. Um, a lot of people think that forgiveness is something that you can do just by separating for somebody and then like forgetting, just kind of dismissing them and no longer interacting with them and um, kind of that forgive and forget idea. Now, it is true that when we forgive, we shouldn't hold account as well. So we should be forgetting the sins or misdeeds or misconduct or how we have crossed people or how they've crossed us. And with that, I think a lot of people think that they can kind of just no longer associate with a person and then say that they forgive them. But in reality, if you're truly forgiving of a person, you're going to continue to interact with them and continue to have a um, reconciled relationship with them and they have the ability to sit in the same room, conduct conversation, be able to be in each other's lives and build each other up as well as to tell each other when we're slipping. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get into a couple of verses in Matthew about what Jesus says about forgiveness and asking for forgiveness as well. So we're first going to read out of chapter 18. And we're going to start in verses 15. It's titled here in my Bible, If a Brother Who Sins Against You. If your brother sins against you, Go and show him his faults, just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen to you, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Verses 18, I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together, my name there am I with them. Verse 21, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Now, in the old, uh, in King James, it actually says seventy times seven. And with that, I believe they're trying to refer to continuously, just constantly. If someone makes a mistake and crosses you and then asks for true forgiveness, you just you forgive them continuously. And it also says further back that um, if we bind things in heaven and lose things in heaven in association to forgiveness, if we're unforgiving, that unforgiveness is going to be there on our day of judgment. And if we are truly forgiving, then the forgiveness will also be there on our day of judgment. Verse 23 of chapter 18. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, canceled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. 
He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servants fell to his knees and begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw that what had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servants just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers from your heart. So I wanted to read Matthew 18 first because it actually describes something that we're going to go back into Matthew 5 and discuss. We can see here that it says continuously forgive your brother. And again, the reason is because in our hearts, if we truly forgive and we're truly willing to be merciful to the other person that's asking for forgiveness, then we will be forgiven in front of our father, Abba, the living God. And with that, the same thing goes. If we're going to refuse true forgiveness in the way that is described by our Lord Jesus Christ and make up our own idea of what forgiveness is or half-heartedly decide that we're just going to dismiss them and say we forgive them, God forgave us for an entire life of animosity towards him rejection of him and brought us back to his a relationship with him and allowed us to have a second chance through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we're going to go ahead and cut people off and cast them out and truly not forgive them, why would you assume that God would actually forgive us? If we're unforgiving in our own hearts and we're holding ourselves in high esteem over another person because we're all on the same playing field, we're all level, we're all equal in the fact that we all deserve to die. We all deserve to be punished. We all deserve to be thrown in prison and tortured. And through our Lord Jesus Christ, we've been reconciled and our Father actually forgives us for that. And takes us away from that indebtedness of sin in a sinful life. Because the wages of sin is death. And so therefore, we could never pay the debt ourselves. Our Lord Jesus Christ did it for us. Now, I want you guys to go ahead and if you need to, go ahead and re-listen to that entire reading again. Because we're going to go into Matthew 5 right now and see an even greater picture of the person asking for forgiveness and what that really looks like. So we're going to go ahead and go into 5, chapter 5 of Matthew, and we're going to start in chapter 17. It's labeled here, the fulfillment of the law. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, nor the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Verse 21, you have heard that it is said to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, 
anyone who says to his brother Raka is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary, who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. So here we actually go ahead and we get a better understanding of what was being taught in chapter 18. If we go back to chapter 18 and actually look over what the parable of the unmerciful servant says, is the unmerciful servant was given the opportunity to not have any debt counted against him, to not, as love is supposed to be, not um, take any account, not to create a list of wrongdoings that someone has done to us when they choose to, to truly apologize and in their heart truly be sorry for what did they what has been done to create a situation where there is animosity, when there becomes a situation where there is a debt owed or an adversarial situation in which there's tension between two people. And we can see here it talks about, if we go back to Matthew 5, it says here that you will be handed over to the judge. And we know that in this situation, the judge is our Lord Jesus Christ. And it says to settle matters quickly with your adversary for two reasons. One is because we know we did something wrong and we shouldn't be sitting there continuously to live in that wrong situation and expect everything to go okay. And at the same time, we shouldn't be sitting there in the wrong situation, expecting the other person not to have hurt feelings or not to be, to feel that they were crossed in some situation. To that whole idea of saying like, oh, I did something wrong and like they just need to get over it. That's not from a God standpoint. They need to forgive the person who's truly willing to reconcile with them. And it says clearly here, first go and be reconciled to your brother. Just like with Cain and Abel, when you're giving your offering, if you have some kind of deceitful heart or anger towards somebody else or know that you've crossed them or cheated them in some way, and you're giving your offer to God, it... it it's like what the, the Pharisees were doing. They were continuously to give their gifts to God while shaming sick individuals, people with disabilities, people with illnesses, people who are lesser in stature and financial ability. Um, that's not how we're supposed to act or, or behave towards people. We can see here that the only time that it's acceptable to treat somebody like a Pharisees or a tax collector, which is kind of a pagan or tax collector, which is kind of to dismiss them, is when we've worked with them and they refuse to notice any wrongdoing or sinful nature within their lifestyle. Um, and then after that, we've talked to several other individuals who are amongst the members of believers because... As Paul had said, to take them before ungodly people is not going to be judged in the correct manner. Most ungodly people just kind of want to see somebody punished and in pain and doesn't want to understand forgiveness or, or the tetaleste uh, idea of removing debt. And that's, that's also after we have gone to the entire congregation of the church 
and brought our petition before the, the church, which in this situation is the Sanhedrin or the court um, of believers. Make sure you understand that because if they're choosing to refuse an, an, an understanding from multiple people who are connected with God, and if we're all supposed to have the minds of Christ and be of one, one type of love, and they're not willing to understand that and they're fighting it and they're rejecting it and trying to live their own uh, way and interpretation constantly, not with disagreements on scripture. If you're willing to discuss situations with people and discuss your interpretations and be willing to be open to other people's ideas on that situation and hash out what it is that you believe and what they believe and have right arguments um, in the situation that they're not actually the overseer because we are supposed to be subject to those that are above us um, because God put them in that position. So with that, we're supposed to understand that I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. So if you have a situation where the both of you have animosity towards each other, you're going to be judged for that later on when we come before our Lord Jesus Christ and he weighs the measure of our hearts. If we fix that situation as soon as possible, because we have no idea when the Lord is coming and we make that right, then we've actually rebound all of those evil spirits that we have let loose by our anger our rejection, our dismissal of other people's feelings. But if they choose not to listen to that entire group, like Paul says, we're not even supposed to eat with those kind of people. And again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, now, this is the situation where we understand that we've sinned. In some situation, we need forgiveness from another person, and it would be sinful for them not to forgive us. So in that circle of things, if we can come together as one unit and both ask for forgiveness and be forgiven by... If two of you agree on earth about anything you ask for, now we're asking for forgiveness, and I'm asking to, to be able to forgive. So in that situation, God's going to grant that to us and forgive us for our actions and our childish behavior before him. But just like this unmerciful servant, if we choose not to truly forgive and truly seek forgiveness from those people who are asking for patience and asking for a situation in which... Um, the other person needs to be warm-hearted towards them, then how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. So we understand that, that even though God is loving, He is also a stern God. He expects His, His children to act accordingly to what it is that He preaches and what He speaks of and not of our own ideas. And most of this Bible is, is laid out pretty much, pretty simple to interpret. There are a few things that maybe are hard for us to actually come to terms with, but you truly understand the conviction that's happening within you. And just by reading this book, there's not really anything that should be hidden from us. So with that... If we're seeking forgiveness and the other person's a believer, they should be forgiving us. But we should also be seeking forgiveness from them and reconciling any relationship that went astray. There's multiple situations in this Bible about what it looks like when one person sins against the other and how in truthful honesty, it's from Matthew 5... The responsibility of the person who actually did the damage to go ask for forgiveness and to seek reconciliation fully, not just, will you forgive me, uh, and then continue to live the lifestyle that they were living. 
And every single time that they come to ask us for forgiveness, we're to forgive them truly from our heart and not just say we forgive them with our mouths. A lot of these verses are divided up uh, to be taught about other things, like if two or more people pray for the same thing, maybe it'll be given to them. And that is truthful that if there is a need within the, the body of believers and multiple people are, are asking for that, it will be granted to us. But in this situation, the way it's described is actually one person asking for forgiveness and the other person giving the forgiveness. And we understand here that it says through the parable about how the money and the situation of all the indebtedness and how when one person was forgiven their debt and then choose not to forgive the other people their debts that owe them money, that our Heavenly Father will treat us, each of us, the same unless we truly forgive from our hearts. If we go back to Matthew 5, we can see that described again. Settle matters quickly with your adversary, who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way, or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown... <clears throat> thrown in prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. So in this situation, remember that it's God who is the judge. It's God who decides who's wrong and who's right based on his word. And he decides at the end who he separates from those that are truly with him and those who are unlawful. Um, the parable of the sheep and the goats. Now, there's two things to remember. If you're in a situation where you were put in hell or put in prison or put in some situation where you're in debt, in debt prison, in a sense. Um, now, remember, all of these are, are earthly ways of describing what's supposed to happen in heaven. That you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. But how do you make any money? How, how would you be able to pay a debt back? How will you be able to reconcile and ask for forgiveness or, or be forgiven when you're, when you're locked away? It's kind of like an eternal punishment because of the situation of you not being able to make amends. And we understand from the later verses... That if we're unmerciful to those around us and they're truly asking for forgiveness in the situation where they're asking for patience and they're asking for reconciliation, God's going to be harsh with us. Um, it's, it's, it's in his nature to fulfill his word. He doesn't go against himself. So with that, I want you guys to truly understand what forgiveness is. And what it means to ask for forgiveness. In asking for forgiveness, you are seeking full reconciliation from a separation. You are trying to create, correct a relationship. You are trying to create, correct uh, a brotherhood, a sisterhood, and a family unit. And with that, the forgiveness is to not cast them out or not dismiss them. And not act as if somehow their feelings are unaccounted for or from a wrong place. If you've hurt somebody and you truly feel that you are sorry and you want to repent from that situation, you understand that you are there to fix your relationships and come back to the people that you have separated yourself from and allow those people to come back in if they have wronged you or owe you some kind of debt in that sense. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close. I'll be getting back to you guys next week. Love all of you and I hope you guys have a good one.